Hello Gemini, welcome to my channel. This is Victoria at Radiant Moon Tarot and we're here doing your weekly reading for October 25th all the way to the 31st. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm truly grateful for each and every one of you. So let's get right into your reading messages, please, for Gemini for the week ahead, please. Of course, we do have Halloween, uh, Semane or Sawane, I should say, um, or I think some people also call it uh, November Eve coming up on the 31st of October. We'll just leave it at the 31st of October. And of course, we do have a, uh, that is the time when the veil between worlds is thinnest. And it can be a very spiritual time, a great time if you're looking to try and connect with past loved ones, with your spirit, your angels, your guides, a great time to engage in some meditation and uh, to try and have that little bit of a connection. Pay attention to your dream sign symbol synchronicities as well, right? Because it is so much easier to connect with that uh, spirit world that uh, sometimes, you know, they work in interesting ways, right? Songs on the radio, um, you know, a black cat crossing your path. If you have a black cat on Halloween, please keep him or her inside. Okay, uh, because they are, you know, uh, through, you know, when the persecution of witches, they were, of course, um, black cats were associated with witchcraft, which um, is interesting, um, because for thousands of years before, cats are um, associated with protection, right? They are the guardians of the underworld, so to speak. So they were always around for protection, and then somehow they got associated with witches and persecuted from there. So anyway, so it's just well known fact to keep your protect your little kitty cats on Halloween. Okay. But that's a great time to connect. And if you were ever looking to try and get some messages from your past loved ones, that is a wonderful time to do that. Just a little bit easier. We have the narrow pathway coming out, tread thoughtfully. So you may be in a situation where you need to keep to the straight and narrow. Um, it may not be a time to divert from your plan or from your direction that you're currently on. You may have a goal. Uh, you may have a project that you're working on. And it may be going a little bit slowly and you might be thinking, well, am I really on the right path? When we have the narrow, narrow pathway, this is really about taking things one step at a time. Don't be in a hurry to rush something. There's a reason that sometimes things take a while to accomplish, right? Because ultimately you're on the path to success, right? We don't always want to upset the apple cart or deviate from our plan. And if you've got a really good plan in place, keep going forward. Keep believing in yourself that you can accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish. You may also have a situation for your week ahead. It could be something that's carried over from the week before, some continuation of something. But it may just be that a situation where you want to keep to yourself a little bit and not necessarily get involved in someone else's problems or drama of some sort. And it's like, you know what, I'm just going to keep my head down and I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm, it's not my problem and it's not my circus, not my monkeys, and I ain't getting involved. So you may need to take a little bit of a step back there for your own, um, probably for your own protection in a certain way. Okay. And just to kind of, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it and I'm not getting involved. We have watching clouds lie back, rest and relax. Some of you have been working really, really hard. And this is that reminder to take care of yourself. And it is also the reminder there that sometimes if we, some at sometimes in our lives, we need to do nothing. And we don't need to always be active. We don't always need to have a project. Um, even if you do have some chores to do, this is a reminder that sometimes doing nothing is okay. It's good for our health, our physical health, our mental health, right? So if, especially if you're run off your feet, um, it's good for your spiritual health as well, because when you lie back, you relax and you just kind of uh, let a few things slide. You're not thinking about anything. You just let your mind drift. Um, when I was watching the clouds, I love watching clouds. It's actually one of the most ancient forms of scrying, of looking for messages in those clouds. And I never realized it until I was older. But when I was a kid, m my dad used to, because my dad's kind of, he's amateur, amateur astronomer among, among, among a million other hobbies that he's got. But um, we used to just sit there on a summer day and lie back in the grass and we would all 
um, you know, look at the clouds and, oh, I see a dragon or I see this. And, you know, it's a great fun activity. And, but I didn't know until much later in my life that it's actually kind of a form of scrying and you can get some messages and things out of there. So you never know what may transpire when you are just in a place of being relaxed um, not necessarily having that urge to do anything. Sometimes we need to let certain things go because it actually restores our energy a little bit. So you might want to find a little bit of time in the week ahead to take care of yourself a little bit, to take that little bit of a brain breather, shall we say, um, you know, to uh, just kind of connect with yourself a little bit or just do kind of nothing. Right. And especially with Halloween coming up, that can absolutely be when you get some messages from the beyond. Right. Especially watching those clouds or, you know, it's it's kind of like meditation, but not just take the fluff away. Just take the fluff away because really you're just allowing your mind to drift. And that's when we get some really interesting information. And so uh, connection with spirit there. All right, now the beginning of the week coming out, we've got the Seven of Air. I love the Seven of Air, especially coming out of this deck. I'll explain why. We've got the Two of Fire. All right, and we also have the Strength card coming in, Advice from Spirit, the Three of Water, and Blessings headed your way, the Messenger of Water. Ooh la la. Okay, and let me see. The energy, nice. The energy at the bottom of your deck. This is the underlying energy influencing your week. The Ace of Air is all about your intuition, your communication, your, um, you know, spiritual connection, your ability to get your point across, uh, new conversations, new beginnings, this breath of fresh air that comes in with this one. So this is beautiful energy. You have the ability to cut through anyone's BS here. You have the ability to find your solutions. The ace of, uh, the, it's this ace of swords energy, by the way. Okay. And when we have the ace of swords, this is, you know, about finding your way forward, finding your, um, new path, finding the answers that you're looking for. This is having those new conversations. There may be a new, um, uh, a new person coming into your life or someone that you are connecting with in some way. Um, but finding those solutions that you need, the epiphany moments come in with the Ace of Swords energy, but also is the sort of truth, honesty, victory, and success, all yours, allowing you to move forward. All right. And it brings you, um, it brings you the ability to overcome a challenge or a problem in a very positive way. Focus on the solutions and that gives you that beautiful, fresh, vibrant energy there. Beginning of your week, we have the seven of air. Now the seven of air is the seven of swords. And in this particular deck, this is all about nonconformity of about dancing to the beat of your own drum, being focused on yourself, not people pleasing in any kind of way. It can also represent being a little bit of a leader, the person that people flock to, because it's really about knowing who you are and having a really good sense of yourself and what you need to do. And of course, traditionally, the Seven of Swords can also represent a bit of a sticky situation that you might be in, okay? The need to see the truth in something, okay? Because it does bring in sometimes an energy of deception, betrayal, a little bit of a situation that you can't quite trust. So that's where that narrow pathway comes in. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't get dragged into what anyone else's BS. The Ace of Air, the Seven of Air, um, working together there, you have the ability to pick and choose your battles as well. And you have the ability to find a resolution to something that may have been brewing for a while. All right. So, you know, it also gives you that clarity and that sense of purpose that you're looking for. Clarity comes in with that Ace of Swords also. So if there's been a situation that has brought any kind of confusion, your way forward here is to do what is right for you and not worry about other people so much. And, you know, because ultimately that leads you on your path forward. If you are a little bit confused, the Ace of Swords comes in to give you that clarity that you need. All right. And in order to either stay on that straight and narrow, 
dance to the beat of your own drum, or maybe you're even um, in a situation where other people are looking to you for guidance and support, and this gives you the ability to, you know, help other people out a little bit, but not sacrificing your own, how should we say, not sacrificing your own priorities. There we go, right? And, you know, sometimes people can be like energy suckers, like soul suckers, right? And if you look at the seven of seven of air, it looks like mother goose, right? And all of these geese um, flocking towards her and looking at looking at this beautiful angel and saying, hmm, uh, we look to you for guidance, oh, wise one. And, uh, you know, so this gives you the ability with the ace of air to be available and to help other people but also to continue on your path, not let anyone overstep their boundaries, all right? It does give you a little bit of that um, ability. The Two of Fire is about making plans, is about looking out into the future, but it can also be a little bit of a stuck energy, okay? And you may have some plans that you are uh, trying to get underway, and the Two of Fire shows in this particular deck here that you kind of know the way forward, all right, but maybe you've been stuck for a while. There's some information that you don't have, or maybe you've just, you know what you want to do, or you know what your end game is, but you just might not be sure how to get there. The Two of uh, the two of Wands is a little bit of daydreamer energy. It is a little bit of looking out into the horizon, seeing all the possibilities, but not always knowing what to do about it. And, you know, and while we're in that daydreaming energy, tap into that watching the clouds, lie back, relax, let your mind drift, let your senses kind of just wander a little bit. We can quite often get those epiphany moments, that ace of air. We can quite often get those epiphany moments when we're not trying so hard to find those answers or to find our way forward, right? And that's quite often when we're, because we're more symbiotic with the universe a little bit when we're in that energy and we're not stressing quite so much, right? So, um, because sometimes when we, you know, we know what we want, I mean, the path is clear and, but sometimes we just get stuck in a fantasy world a little bit. Um, we get lost in our imagination um, we're so busy focused on our end game, uh, that we don't necessarily see other opportunities, other options that are around us. Right. And you know, the saying that you can't see the forest through the trees. And sometimes when we focus too, too much on one little thing, we miss a lot of other things that are around us. So there is, um, um, something there where you might need to have a look at things a little bit, uh, differently. You might need to expand your horizons in some way. Um, you know, find a way to put your plans into motion, even if that means looking at alternate possibilities. But the Two of Fire also does show a little bit of a waiting game that you know what you want and you are not going to sacrifice any part of yourself in order to make anyone else happy, right? And because you're really not necessarily in people-pleasing mode anymore with that Seven of Air, right? You're, you know, that sword cuts like a knife, right? So you may not be in people-pleasing mode anymore and you're like, no, I'm going to do this my way and I know what I need to do. And I'm going to take my little baby steps in order to accomplish my goals. And I'm going to stay on this path and I'm going to stay on the straight and narrow. And I'm not going to let anyone try and tell me otherwise, right? Because you can really know the seven of air can be a little bit, um, a little bit stubborn maybe. Okay. Especially if you're just, no, I'm not. I'm not here to serve you. Okay. I'm not here to live your life and live your goals and your dreams. I'm here to follow my goals. Interesting. So we've got the strength card coming out here as well as this Leo energy. And this is beautiful energy, giving you some patience, um, giving you the courage to persevere, maybe even to make change if that's, uh, if that's something that you're looking to do in the week ahead. This gives you the ability to find your solutions, okay, or at least be kind to yourself and people that are around you um, through the good times and the bad shall we say. All right. But this really does give you that inner strength to get over your challenges and obstacles, to continue on the path that you're on, even if it's maybe not going as fast as that, as you wanted, it does give you that patience 
that we quite often need. But again, it gives you that inner strength, that inner confidence, that inner power um, to stick to your guns, to continue on your dream, on your journey, right? And to face your fears even as well. And, you know, this person, right, we've got this big Leo the lion standing right here, right? And she has tamed that lion. So this is the reminder that we can overcome our obstacles and fears, no matter how big, powerful, and terrifying they are, by being calm, being kind, being patient, being loving, not just with the people around us, but also with ourselves, especially, all right, because you don't tame a lion by beating it to death or by fighting with it, right? You need to gain its trust. You need to be patient. You need to be calm. You need to be able to have it eating out of the palm of your hand. So this is that reminder here to um, be strong, be patient with yourself and those around you. And success will follow. You'll overcome your challenges, your hurdles, right? But this is also a reminder there that we sometimes do need to recharge our batteries. Watching the clouds, lay back, rest, and relax. Because in order for us to be strong, for the people that are around us, we need to make sure that we are strong ourselves. So the strength card reminds you of that, all right? To keep your energy strong, be, have that strength within you and recharge your batteries wherever it is that you need to go out and have some fun. Um, you know, get together with friends, uh, you know, take care of yourself in other ways, even if it's laying back in a proverbial hammock and doing nothing. Now, I don't really live somewhere where I can really put up a hammock all year round. Well, I probably could be a little bit chilly. I'd probably have to bundle up a little bit, but, um, you know, but, you know, use that ham hammock as, you know, your couch can be your hammock or something, right? So, but take care of yourself, recharge your batteries, your advice from spirit, get out and have some fun. Okay, the three of water, the three of cups energy is the card of socialization, of friends, of getting together, of, you know, enjoying the, enjoying your life, even if it's just for a couple of hours, right? Life is meant to be lived. It's meant to be enjoyed. And sure, we've got problems and challenges and battles that we have to go through, rites of passage, all of these things, but we can't forget that we're wherever we need to embrace some joy and it elevates our consciousness it elevates our vibration when we get out and have some fun so the three of water quite often does represent some good news coming in from some sort of social friendship kind of environment all right now this can just be you embracing some wonderful positive news, positive energy. Um, this can be you really uh, actually connecting with spirit possibly even and being really overjoyed by that. But there can also be uh, something to celebrate, probably something within your social circle. If you get an invitation in the week ahead to go out and socialize and have a little bit of fun, take it. Because with that lay back, rest, relax, and the strength card coming out, you might be overworked. You might need that little bit of a brain break, right? You might just need to be a little bit footloose and fancy free, even if it's just for a couple hours. Go. You never know how much fun you might actually have, and that alone can recharge your batteries. Blessings headed your way. The messenger of water. This is the Knight of Cups. An offer, an opportunity, an invitation, Good news. This is beautiful energy. Some of you may actually have some sort of proposal headed your way of some sort. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Yes, the Knight of the Knight of Cups can absolutely represent romance coming in with the Ace of Air. This may be something that you've attracted in. Um, this can be something that you've waited for for a while. So it could be something as simple as you going out to the coffee shop, Ooh, even going out with your friends, sorry, I get excited, um, going out with your friends, you may actually meet some new connections along the way. This can be a new friend. 
This can be possibly a new romantic partner, right? We've got new conversations coming in there with coming in here with that ace of air. So, you know, you may even have somebody that comes in here that just helps you um, along your career path, right? But someone who has a genuine offer for you, um, an offer from their heart, something that with no strings attached and something very positive. Now, this can also be you opening your heart to receive blessings. This can be you having a spiritual connection, um, embarking on a creative endeavor, a creative project, maybe even trying to find a creative resolution to a problem that you've been trying to solve or a situation that you've um, that you've been dealing with. Whatever that happens to be for you, that water energy is positive emotions. Yes, possibly romance. Yes, possibly engagements or invitations. Okay, it can just be you being open to different possibilities that are flowing around you. All right, this can be a healing energy as well, but because the, the water is uh, connected with your higher self, with spirit, especially that ace of air that's there as well, Okay, you could absolutely find yourself having some sort of messages from beyond the veil, especially towards the end of the week. So pay close attention to your dreams, um, signs, symbols, synchronicities of all kinds, uh, animals, insects where they're not supposed to be, feathers, wonderful way that angels communicate with us as well. And I don't mean feathers underneath a bird's nest or where birds in your neighborhood roost. Okay, we're talking about in weird places where those feathers don't belong. Okay, and um, you know, I had one a couple of weeks ago. Mysteriously, I found a feather right here. Now I'm inside. Okay, there is. I don't have birds. All right, I have a dog. I don't have birds. Um, there is no way that a feather would ever have been on my table right here. But there it was. So anyway, so that was interesting. So it's those kind of things that you're looking for. All right. So I'm going to leave that there, but I'm going to close out your reading here with a couple of angel answers cards, last pieces of advice for you for the week ahead. Last bit of information, please, for Gemini. What else do we need to know? Ooh, thank you. There was one. And there's your second one. So let's have a look at which one went flying out of there. We go improving your health. Okay, there's that strength card. There's that watching the clouds energy that you may have been working too hard. You may have been, you may be frazzled. You may be, um, you know, working on something that's just really, really slow. You're feeling tired. Your energy is a little bit low, maybe. All right, improving health, focus on yourself. All right, and you know, this can be something as simple as doing chakra clearing, some energy work, some good old fashioned energy work there. This can be you taking a time out, going out for some fun, just kind of let loose, right? Um, you know, relax, have a nap, whatever that looks like for you. All right, this is showing that there is something health related that you need to focus on. Okay, and mentally, physically, spiritually, anything, right? And this is you need to take the time out there to recharge your batteries, okay, or take care of yourself in another way. And we have look for a sign. Well, there you go. Okay, so I won't repeat all of that because basically I said everything associated with this card before it came out. So look for a sign. There's messages, there's news, there's information coming in. Tap into that spiritual energy that we've got that comes in at the end of the week with the uh, with October 31st, okay, take full advantage of that because someone has some information, a message there for you that is very important for you, something that you need to hear. You might not want to hear it, but something that you need to hear, okay? Leave that there for you, Gemini. I hope there was something in this reading that resonated in some way. If there was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a great day, a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.